maybe. <laughs> it should be now. All righty. Is the green light on? Oh, okay, yeah. we'll give it a second. I would assume yeah. there was one. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll have to text you. Alright. All good? We're good. Cool. <coughs> Alrighty, everyone ready? Okay. Sure. Um, can I have 10 seconds? Yep. Possibly? For sure. <sighs> <laughs> Sacred Heart Church. Oh, yeah. It is April 1st. Oh. I don't hear you. <laughs> I have to get my son. Okay, so this is my birthday next week. I'll, you'll never hit my birthday because I'm always on a second year. Oh, that's right. Well, yeah. happy pre birthday. Yeah. No, I guess not. Yeah, it's okay. Cool. Thank you. Okay. I'm, I'm All right. Yeah. All righty. <laughs> If we could all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alrighty, we'll call this meeting to order at 7.02 p.m. Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Juan Crooks? Here. Benedetti? Here. Cabawadden? Present. Hey. Here. Perugia. Here. Rodriguez. Here. Rizappa. Here. Quorum present, Mayor Rizappa. Thank you, Madam Clerk. First item we have is the minute approval for the March 20th, 2023 Support. regular meeting. Support. Moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. I got to get used to looking up top, too. All right, uh, next item we have here is uh, public comment regarding items on today's agenda. Uh, this portion of public comment is uh, r reserved for items that we have on today's agenda. Um, we'll have another opportunity for public comment at the close of the meeting. Uh, we'll go to those uh, in person first and then those on the Zoom. If you're on the Zoom and wishing to speak, please use the raise hand function um, under either participants or reactions. I ask that everyone wishing to speak please begins with their name and address. Um, direct all questions through me and please limit their comment to five minutes. So I'm not seeing any on Zoom. Do Mr. Zachowski by chance? Or yeah. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Just make sure. Feel free. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Chris Zakowski, uh, 2834 Fifth Street. I believe you have a letter in front of you that I submitted to the clerk uh, Friday late. That's why I'm late on the agenda. Um, it explains some of the problems we're ha uh, issues we're having with some slow drainage and flooding problems on the Fifth Street Alley. And here are some additional pictures that my fiance has gotten over the weekend of some of the neighbors flooding. Uh, pictures speak a thousand words. <clears throat> Uh, the access, there's, there's been a problem with this flooding in this alley for decades, from what I hear. I've only owned my property for three years, numerous times. I've had up to 10 inches of water in a 1,500 square foot garage. Neighbor has fixed his garage. A week later, it floods. He's done putting any more money into his. Young kid, I feel sorry for him. I've been privy to some uh, drainage uh, drawings from the city, and I don't know if it's a design problem, a maintenance problem, or, or what, but there's like some pinch points on the drainage here where the flow goes, but my main concern is the alley is a dead-end run. So from one end of the alley, which is under West Road Viaduct, and man's parking lot, it's a dead end run. It flows to the middle of the alley. From the middle of that alley, it goes across the man's parking lot or their, their gravel 
the drive. If that ever gets plugged, we're never going to get rid of the water. I've had contact with the building department, DPW. I've had contact with the engineering department, and Christopher was on the uh, city re a resident engineer at one time. I don't know his name. I apologize. His last name. I apologize. He said that there was a possibility of using this alley next to 2876. It's, it's a 16.5 foot <clears throat> easement, public alley easement, um, that he was going to try to tie in from this catch basin or the alley uh, dead end runs across to uh, Fifth Street, which is a 21 inch drain. I don't know if that's possible. Engineering would probably have to look at it because I don't know where the drop is on the 5th Street because the alley is lower than 5th Street. So to get water to run uphill might be difficult, but if the drop on 5th is low enough, it might be feasible. But something has to be done. It's gone on long enough, and we get the runoff from the West Road Bridge. Been to Wayne County. Wayne County says it's Trenton's problem. I go to DPW. I complain about the the bridge, it's, it's Wayne County's problem. The storm drains, I believe you have a couple of pictures of the storm drains coming from the viaduct. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be, and I don't have the drawings for it, but this is the, this is the bridge. There's a 24 inch storm sewer here that I believe all of those are supposed to go into. They're broken off at the ground, it just floods the alley more. Mans, Mans, uh, N.A. Mans is 12 inches higher than the alley. It's a waterfall of silt and sediment that comes down that alley. I've personally walked that alley many times, used post hole diggers and things to catch, clean the catch basins out. It's overwhelming. We're, we're getting inundated with water there all the time. It seeps into our basements. So, that's one of the reasons I'm here. And then there's also something that is sitting on the Planning Commission right now. I went to a meeting a couple of weeks ago. They want to pave over a vacant lot that sits next to 2876. And at the beginning of that meeting, they said they want to pave over the vacated alley. I don't believe that alley easement is vacated. If it is, my mistake, but I don't know if that was ever vacated. I don't have any problem with them paving over that parking lot. None whatsoever. No objections. But if that is an easement and an access to get from the 5th Street Alley to 5th Street for a drain, it may be the cheapest and easiest way to alleviate our problem on 5th Street. Before they pave. Before they pave. And I would challenge this board to show me another alley in this city that's as disgusting as that one that we have behind our homes. Thank you for your time. No, that was good timing there, but no, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Zuchowski, just for bringing this to our attention too and sending those pictures. I know all of council got to see them over the weekend before I know the it's short all. notice. But like you said, it's something that's been a problem that's gone on long before you live there and at the, you know, we could talk about why that is and all that, but the only thing that we can do is make it better. So. I'm here for a solution. Absolutely. Not a blame game. So if we could actually get a motion to refer this to administration. So moved. Because Support. Moved and supported. Any further discussion? Uh, just to wrap that up. But so what, I mean, I know our DPW director and our engineer met about it even this morning. And yes. they do, there is a path forward for this. And, so. I, and Okay, now that brings me to one more question if I have a couple of minutes. If you do come up with a solution, are the citizens that it affects going to be notified of that possible solution like uh you know are you, uh, i believe that uh dean dean you gave me a call this evening but am i are, are we going to be notified of what's going to go on when the and do you want to go on about the notification just for when the construction uh, or anything or be. anything that so, goes on so like like we talked about earlier and everything it will, the way I'd like to handle this is more on an emergency uh, fashion, unless, unless people feel otherwise or whatever. But uh, our plan is to get the engine engineer out there again to make some confirmations and, and everything that we can do it. And then we would scope and uh, bid the project out. Mm -hmm. um, and then the 
uh, the other part of it is the alley w was planned to be graded and mm -hmm. uh, regraveled um, this year. I mean, notification. Um, I mean, the, we, is, is w with sewer upgrades, we don't normally make a public notification unless we're going to cut off your sewer right. uh, access or your, mm -hmm. your your water access. But I can I, I can assure you that we're going to expedite as fast as I can, and I know I have support here from council. To have you entertained the idea of using that uh, that easement from the alley to Fifth Street at I all? I believe I believe that is the plan. Good. Um, I think. The, the it, I, I mean, the, I don't know what the numbers look like. Right. As far I, as the fall goes, but right, and that's and that's the one thing the engineer is going to have to confirm. I can assure you that it will be addressed. Um, and if it isn't going to be addressed, um, you'll get a phone call from me directly, and I'll explain to you the who, the what, the why. But um, I, honestly, it's it, from what I know so far, it it's very solvable, and we'll, we'll make it right. Well, that would be great. That would be great. So. Yeah. Is there any word from Wayne County about the bridge? <laughs> and the drainage. Well, well, I can that one. <laughs> Mainly the drainage on it. They cleaned one drain out, and it's great. But it still just if, goes if on the road. If those drains worked, all that water wouldn't come into the alley, and it would help a lot. It, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's and an overwhelming Wayne, slow system. Right. Wayne County is aware of those issues and those challenges, and we've had um, a number of conversations with Wayne County. I will tell you, um, or I think I mentioned it earlier or whatever, but... Uh, Wayne County is in the design phase for rebuilding that uh, viaduct, um, but historically the water has not been put anywhere appropriate. Um, we've had clogged drains, I think, are cleaned out on a regular basis, even down by the DPW yard. It's and uh, not to pass it off on Wayne County, but the, the viaduct, and the easements next to the viaduct, that is all Wayne County, that is not ours. Um, we, we do go above and beyond by maintaining and, and, and doing work on that, but um, it's, it's generally a, a Wayne County mm -hmm. challenge. Well, I would never say that I'm an engineer or anything, but from mm -hmm. what I can gather off of these drawings, there are a couple of avenues that could work. I mean, there's some 24-inch mains there, a 21-inch main. The ones behind our property aren't marked, so I don't know. And I don't know how dated this drawing is either. Right. But I think there's I, I'm, some I'm easier... I'm highly confident Mr. Sabak will be able to come up with okay. a very affordable, uh, uh, rapid solution. I mean, he is top-notch. In, in, in his field, I have 100% faith that between him and uh, Mr. Sargent, we'll, we'll be able to remedy this. And you would agree that we shouldn't have to be putting up with this? Uh, like I that. told you on the phone, 100%. This is, uh, you have my apologies. Um, I, I'm not going to blame anybody. It is what it is. Uh, uh, it's been uh -huh. there for at least 20 years. I can't I, believe some I mean, of those people have put... It's terrible. I've seen railroad ties floating down that yep. alley. Yep. Shouldn't, shouldn't that people happen. are parking their cars on so that they can get to. Yep. Mm -hmm. it, it, it shouldn't happen, but it is, yeah. and okay. we'll, we'll make it right. Well, I'll be watching. No, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, With bated breath. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. I mean, up to you. It doesn't matter. He deemed a fine job. Okay. So. So, so, and in no further discussions, unanimously so ordered. So, yeah, we'll get that squared away <clears throat> with administration. Alrighty. And don't feel obligated to stay, guys. Don't worry. So, <laughs> so next item we have on the agenda, we have uh, for appointments uh, for a planning commission here, uh, requesting this body's approval um, for my appointment of Keith Russo to the planning commission for a term expiring so April 1st, 2026 has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Benedetti? Yes. Cabawadden? Yes. Pate? Yes. Perugia? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Rizepa? Abstain. Von Crooks? Yes. Motion carries, Mayor Rizepa. Thank you, Madam Clerk. All right, next item, uh, well, three straight items that we have here from the city controller. I'll allow Ms. Saul to take the mic here. First up being budget amendments for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2023. 
Thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> I have provided the detail. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> of the budget amendments for the quarter ending March 31st, 2023, um, with different explanations for the changes that are required and why. I would so move. Support. Support moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Next up, we have the proposed fiscal year 2023 2024 budget. Thank you, Mayor. Um, a public hearing will be will be held by City Council in the Council Chambers at Trenton at Trenton City Hall, 2800 Third Street, on May 15th at 6:30 p.m. on the adoption of the proposed city budget for fiscal year 2023-24. Um, there will be um, printed copies of the budget at the library in the City Clerk's <coughs> Office, as well as a copy on our website for examination. Um, from now until May 15th. So moved. Support. Support. Moved and supported. Place that on file and uh, hold the public hearing. Any further discussion? Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. And lastly, the uh, resolution authorizing publication of notice of intent to issue capital improvement bonds. Okay, this, is, this resolution is the first step in financing the one trash truck, the loader truck, and the pool improvements approved by council at prior meetings. This resolution serves two main purposes. One is to notify the public of our intent and declaration of intent to reimburse. So moved. Support. support. Moved and supported. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank you, Ms. Hall. Thank you. All right, next up we have our DPS director, Mr. Sargent, here uh, for two items. First up being uh, requesting a one-year lawn mowing contract extension to turf concepts. Thank you, Mayor. Last year, city forces once again resumed mowing duties of approximately 65% of the city-owned properties. The other 35% was cut by turf concepts, who has been with the city since 2020. The combination of DPW crews along with turf concepts resulted in a much improved appearance in our parks and public spaces. Therefore, I believe it's in the city's best interest to extend a one-year contract extension with turf concepts in the amount of $64,200. This cost includes a 5% increase from last year due to rising costs in manpower, fuel, and equipment. This one-year extension would be under the same terms and conditions outlined in the original contract. Funds are budgeted in the Parks and Facilities Contractual Mowing Account. So moved. Support. Support. Has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank you very much. And then next up, we have a DPS uh, request for a quote approval for Camp's mobile tub grinding service. Thank you. On February 22nd, we experienced a historic ice storm which caused widespread damage to trees throughout the city. DPW crews spent the following month cleaning up all the debris. As a result of this, we have a massive pile of limbs and logs in our yard taking up a large portion of our space. It would take our crews weeks to haul all of this material to the landfill, along with paying hefty tipping fees due to the weight of the logs. I reached out to the only two mobile tub grinding services that I could find in Lower Michigan to obtain quotes. Both companies responded, but only one provided a quote. Therefore, I am requesting approval for the quote for camps to provide this service in the total amount of $7,000. Funds are available in sanitation account number 101-528-928. So, so moved. Support. Moved and supported. Any further discussion? Councilman Kevin Kevin, that includes an operator as well for the equipment. We're kind of no touch. They no bring touch. in the tub grinder. They do all the grinding. Semis. Point them, point them to the pile. They You load them in the trans uh, trailers and... Correct. Get it out of there. They'll haul it all off site and everything. It's not a bad price for what you've got to take away. I agree. Right. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Kevin. Mm -hmm. All right, next up we have the Parks and Recreation Director, Mr. Beaker, for three items here. First up being the ARPA Spark Grant Agreement. Thank you, Mayor. As noticed in previous meetings, the City of Trenton was awarded the Michigan Spark Grant for use at the Kennedy Aquatic Center. Thanks to many helping hands. Michigan Department of Natural Resources, in order to meet federal requirements, requires a formal acceptance of the awarded grant. In turn, I ask that your honorable body approve the acceptance of the Michigan Spark Grant and allow the city clerk and mayor to sign on behalf of the city of Trenton for the agreement set forth. So moved. S support. support. Moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Councilwoman Pate. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that I was at the SEMCOG quarterly meeting and people were coming up to me congratulating the City of Trenton for getting the SPARC <coughs> grant. And I believe they said, and 
I heard it quickly, but I believe it's we're only one of three in the entire southeast region, if not the state. But I think it's more of the southeast region. So yeah, it's quite so. an honor for us to get that. So again, congratulations. Thank you. Yep. Awesome. Okay, any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Uh, next, Kennedy, hot water storage tanks. Kennedy Recreation Center has six total hot water storage tanks that provide hot water to the majority of the facility's locker rooms uh, and Zambonis. Uh, these tanks began to leak to the point of dumping water into a locker room below and shorting out our light fixtures. The replacement of the tanks was anticipated uh, in the budget year, preferably in the summer. However, the major leak required us to move a little quicker than anticipated. Uh, Quint Plumbing has quoted and mobilized for the emergency repair in the amount of $19,500. The repair will cover the installation of six hot water storage tanks, new valves, reworking of the pipes, and make reinstallation easier in the future. The project was budgeted and will come uh, from the account 208-696-933, uh, the equipment maintenance. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. And then lastly, the festival entertainment contracts. Our entertainment chairperson has secured the sound and lighting package as well as the family entertainment acts for the 2023 Summer Festival. Contractual agreements which are attached have been issued for IMIJ sound and lighting and the entire for the entire festival in the amount of $6,900 and Carrie and Paul group for the entire festival dates of amount in the amount of $5,875. All of these expenditures have been approved by the festival committee, are within the festival entertainment budget, and will be paid through sponsors and revenue generated from this year's festival. So, so moved. moved. Support. Support. It has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank you very much, Jim. Thank you all. All right, next up we have from our wastewater troop, uh, treatment plant superintendent, Mr. O'Day, two items here. Uh, the first one being laboratory and administration building floor replacement. Uh, good evening, mayor, council, citizens, fellow department heads. Um, yes, the first one is for the, you said the chlorine control valve? Uh, this one, was, sorry, it was the uh, laboratory and administration building floor uh, replacement. Oh, okay, that's good enough. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, the floor in the laboratory and the administration building, it's one building, it's um, 40 years old. It's part of our asset management program at the plant. We have all our buildings included in our equipment to be replaced as they get old. So 40 years old and disintegrated pretty bad. Uh, it's making it difficult to clean. So we solicited quotes from reputable companies in the area down here, and we recommend to go with uh, Metro Carpet and Floors in the sum of $6,308 to replace this floor. So moved. So support. support. Moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. And then we'll go to the uh, request to authorize payment for replacement chlorine control valve. OK, thank you, Mayor. OK, the um, wastewater plant is requesting to replace a replacement hydro instrument series 230 chlorine control valve it's a long name um, to replace the one that was installed in 2012 this um, chlorine control valve provides an accurate dosing control of the chlorine chemical gas into our final effluent water to provide disinfection which is a requirement of the state uh, permit for the wastewater plant so it was recommended by our chlorine um, repair vendor to replace this one. We actually did a little um, did a little investigation, and the valve that we currently had was um, had a lot more extra bells and whistles on it. So we actually found one the series 230, which was a little bit cheaper, but it did, did the same function. So I'm not sure why we had the more uh, expensive valve on there 10 years ago, but that's how it was. So we went ahead and um, sized this one to replace the one that's existing there anyway. So this valve is $4,137 to replace that one. So that's what I'm asking to so move. support. Moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank you very much, John. Okay, thank you. All right, next up here, we've got a resolution uh, from myself here about pension grant funding. Um, <clears throat> Wherein, I'll just read this here very briefly, whereas the city of Tr Trenton has taken financially difficult steps to stabilize its pension program and get its pension costs and liabilities under <clears throat> control, 
And whereas these steps followed best practices established by the state of Michigan and kept the city of Trenton operationally viable in the face of enormous financial pressures, and whereas HB 5054 of 2022 would have divided $250 million between the city of Trenton and other communities like it that made the tough decisions and followed those best practices, and whereas the city of Trenton and others like it are ineligible for $750 million in pension relief allocated by the state in 2022 despite experiencing the same pension-related financial stresses as those who will receive that relief. And whereas these stresses have been amplified by market losses in 2022 and a volatile market in 2023, and whereas the $250 million would have immeasurable impact on our ability to address our pension liabilities, maintain employment levels, and provide the services our taxpayers depend upon. <clears throat> And whereas both the $750 million allocated and the $250 million requested here had broad bipartisan support in the House a year ago, and whereas 5054 created an equitable balance between those with pension, uh, those with pensions the House considered substantially underfunded and those who had followed best practices to achieve a higher front funding ratio, whereas unallocated revenues are available to the state in 2023 to again make this pension assistance equitable by helping those communities struggling with pension costs but ineligible for the $750 million. Therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Trenton ask the State of Michigan Legislature and Governor's Office to revisit HB 5054 and that the Legislature and Governor give bipartisan support to the inclusion of $250 million in the 2023 state budget to be divided between communities, including the City of Trenton, that meet the best practices required in that bill. So moved. Support. support. It has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank you all very much. All right, we have a one late communication this evening um, from our city administrator. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Sorry, I didn't bring the, uh, the laptop yeah, to yeah, me. Gotcha. Uh, before you have uh, a motion to uh, approve the yes thank you. <laughs> I should be the one prepared um, approve the annual assessment to the guidance center provide that provides uh, substance abuse and behavior health to downriver area we traditionally do uh, uh, contribute eight thousand dollars annually to the guidance center and, and in this case um, it's um, just a renewal of that funding would come from 101 983 dot zero 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 and just a, a little footnote that um, we this is actually very affordable for us right now because um, part of our opiate um, settlement that we've been re receiving chunks of over the last year um, we're going to be able to apply those funds to this uh, contribution and it'll it'll have a direct impact right on our community so ask that you What's move so to moved? approve Board. thank Board. you Moved and supported. Any further discussion? Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank you, Dean. And then you can. You can do we, no. Yes, uh, Mr. Here. Mayor, I also have a late item. Uh, so I would like to request to hold a closed session of City Council for the purpose of discussing litigation, potential litigation, and labor negotiations following the regular Council meeting of April 6, 17th, 2023. So moved. Or support. Sorry. So moved and supported. Any further discussion? Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Benedetti? Yes. Cabawadden? Yes. Pate? Yes. Perucci? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Rosepa? Yes. Juan Crooks? Yes. Motion carries, Mayor Rosepa. All right, thank you, and thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Pate, for that. Um, we'll kick it over to you, actually, here, um, as well, for disp disbursements and statements and then reports. Thank you. I'd like to move to approve the authorized disbursements of April 3rd, 2023 in the amount of $497,225.34. Support. Moved and supported. Any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. And I'd like to move to <coughs> receive and place on file the Board of Review Minutes dated March 2023. Support. Moved and supported. Any further discussion? Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank you. All right. Thank you, <coughs> Madam Mayor Pro Tem. All right, we'll go to other council business now here. Um, I get very brief. Obviously, we'll uh, have our uh, budget study session immediately following uh, this meeting. So for those, I uh, will keep this same Zoom open for those on Zoom. 
um, so no need to log off and log back in. Um, but do want to thank all of our department heads um, for all the effort um, put into this process. Um, is never the most fun or easy, but uh, all things considered, I feel really, really good um, about where we were able to be and get to for that matter budget-wise. Um, I'll obviously go into more detail about that later, but um, it was, I kind of alluded to it at a previous meeting, but it was definitely the, the easiest one um, we've gone through uh, since I've been in this position. Um, and now that doesn't necessarily mean it was the most fun um, or uh, recorded the easiest decisions and all, but um, in terms of being straightforward because um, you know of the excellent work of our department heads, not only between budgets but leading up to this one too, um, made for a lot of easier decisions for that matter. So look forward to all of our discussion and all of uh, the input amongst council um, both tonight and then uh, Wednesday evening and beyond that too. So. Other than that, uh, I don't have anything further uh, this evening until you get to hear me talk more later, but uh, we'll go to Councilman Perugia first this time. Thank you, Mayor. I have nothing this evening. Alrighty, thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilman Cabawatton. Uh, good evening, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, you know, Mayor, I'd like to thank you and the city administrator as well as the department, stat, department heads for um, for the work on this budget. Looking forward to going through it. and. You know, every year it's uh, there's some creative uh, there's some creative outside of the box thinking, and I look forward to seeing that again this year. Um, seems like we're always able to pull, you know, everything we need together and still provide great service to the residents. So, thank you all for that. Um, just a reminder that um, on Friday at Elizabeth Park is the marshmallow drop. Um, so if you have kids, that's going to be going on on Friday. They drop the marshmallows from a helicopter, so should be fun. Um, other than that, that's all I have tonight, Mayor. Great. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilwoman Rodriguez. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to remind everyone that uh, Saturday at the Westfield Center, I believe it's at, uh, Tim, is it at 9.30 or 10 o'clock, 9.30, uh, for the Easter festivities. <coughs> and that's all I have. Thank you. All right, thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Bon Crooks. Yeah, thank you. I'd just like to wish everybody a happy Easter. Um, I have really nothing else tonight. I have some questions, but I'm going to refer it to budget when we go over the budget. Great. Thank, thank you, you, Councilwoman. Uh, Councilman Benedetti. All set, Mayor. Thank you. All righty. And Mayor Pro Tem Pate. Yes, thank you. I just want to uh, thank everybody, and especially Karen Saul, for putting together a fantastic budget uh, preview for me, uh, and our city administrator Dean for you know sitting through several hours of going through you know the changes. And I think you'll all be um, you know content with what the plan is. I hope you are, and um, please uh, suggest that you do look over the budget. We do have our next meeting, I think, on Wednesday, so um, that we're all prepared for questions. I would really appreciate it. It'll make the whole um, process go a lot quicker if uh, if you can do a little reading in the next couple nights I appreciate it um, also want to say happy holidays as well um, I want to say that we did a grand reopening for River Q's bakery on Saturday and it was so fun and it was so pretty in there just all the Easter treats or whatever holiday treats that you want to grab in there I grabbed some Rice Krispie treats for my family and uh, it is beautifully decorated and just uh, she's so excited to have expanded and offer a lot more space and uh, and trinkets for you to enjoy. Um, and likewise, um, I did eat at Malik Al Kebab on Saturday night and I have three meals out of the one that I ordered. So <laughs> I mean, it was a ton of food. It was really good. Um, that went into the store or sorry, the restaurant and it was it's very beautiful also. So um, I know that there were two different downtown business um, shopping events over the weekend, too. So I'm just glad everybody seems to be doing well and, and trying new things here in Trenton. And we welcome more. Uh, there's lots of meetings going on. I hope to have a more clear update for you uh, next time we meet about all the fun stuff that um, I'm doing behind the scenes. So thank you. Thank you very much, Councilwoman. All right, we'll go to our other elected officials now. Madam Clerk, do you have anything for us tonight? Nothing for me tonight, thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, our assessor, Ms. Barnett, do you have anything? Hi, good afternoon. Have anything to read tonight? All right, thank you very much. Our treasurer, Mr. McCullough. Uh, yes, the, just wanted to commend uh, you, Mayor, and uh, commend the uh, administration and council for taking the time and effort to go over that resolution for the uh, uh, pension grant funding. 
I think it's very important to step up and uh, let folks know uh, what what our opinion is on this. And uh, we've been doing the right thing for a long time. And um, I think it's appropriate that uh, we receive those funds uh, and we'll see how it goes. But thank you very much for stepping up and uh, have a happy Easter. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. McCullough. Appreciate that. And certainly have a happy Easter as well. All right. We'll go to our department heads now. Any of our department heads wishing to speak, we'll go to those in person first, and then any of those on the Zoom. Um, feel free to put your hands up if you do. Let's see. No? Nope. All right. So we'll go here to public comment now. Uh, we'll go anyone uh, here wishing to speak. We'll go to those in person first, and then those on the Zoom. Um, we'll uh, ask that anyone wishing to speak please begins with their name and address. Um, they direct all questions through me and that they please limit their comments to five minutes. Uh, anyone on the Zoom, feel free to use the raise hand function um, under either participants or reactions. We'll get you queued up from there. But feel free to take it away, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, welcome. Uh, or thank you for having me, uh, Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council. Um, I'm my name's William Cox. I'm a fifth generation um, Trentonite. And I wanted, I'm not sure if I'm addressing the proper people, but I had a, I served 10 years in the Navy uh, in a safety billet, both enlisted and as an officer deemed by Congress. And I had a question that is probably not going to be very popular, but it shouldn't cost any money more than the um, amount of money for a sign, even though a lot of our drivers don't pay attention to the signs. There are more recommendations. But I've observed, I'm a member of the Rotary, um, the intersection of Fort Street and West Road. We've had at least three different semi-serious accidents. And I don't know if it, the council has this or if it's Wayne County, but why can't we close that left-hand turn except for maybe emergency vehicles? We already have in place the right-hand turn lane, which, you know, as a member, as far as safety, everything's written in blood or accidents. Um, I've talked to the fire department that they've been there. I've had a few times where I, I had to make the uh, Michigan left turn to, uh, to go, at, or right hand turn, excuse me. And um, I don't know if the, putting a sign saying emergency vehicles would be, um, you know, for that left hand turn. I know it's not a popular, but we already have in place a situation to go around without any additional funding. And I think that, you know, as far as public safety, if we can make our roads better and safer for our community, that's what we're all striving for. So did you say Fort and uh, West Road was what you were? Yeah, the double say? intersection, you know, where you have the left. I don't, I, you know, I wasn't keen to see what happened but I've seen the, the fire trucks have both lanes blocked because there's a, an accident there. Sure, sure. And I don't know the, exactly the <laughs> nature of the injuries. Some of them are, I know one of them was quite extensive because there was quite a few vehicles involved. So yeah. like I said, I don't know if because Wayne County, Fort Street is yeah, Wayne so County and yeah, West Road. It'd be between, yeah, County Road and a State Road, but we can definitely talk to some folks just to see what the, uh, you know, they, they have to analyze all the traffic stuff there at the county. And so I'll definitely talk to some folks and see what they might be able to do for that and if that's at all possible. Well, like I said, it, you know, I just think it would be safe. Um, thank you for your time. Um, you know, Absolutely. Uh, I will announce I'm running for council and looking forward to hopefully serving my community as I serve my country. That's Thank great. you. Thank you very much, Mr. Cox. We appreciate it. All righty. Any other folks for public comment? Oh, sir. Yep, go right ahead. Uh, 
John Reedy, 2006 West Jefferson, Trenton, Michigan. Uh, notes to Ireland, trip to Ireland. Oh, wrong, wrong meeting. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, four or five years ago, I made an effort to approach the uh, Department of a uh, Athletics and Department of Education about installing Armaflex insulation, which is used in the refrigeration trade, around the goalposts, around the perimeter of the goalposts to protect somebody who made a header into that wrought iron goalpost from becoming killed or seriously maimed. And it went upon deaf ears. And I said that I would uh, provide the labor if they provided the cost of the Armaflex insulation, which is somewhat ins expensive. It's a black insulation that's very dense. And it gives you a factor of safety if somebody hit their head against those wrought iron goalposts. It would give you an extra factor of safety where you possibly wouldn't kill somebody from trying to do a header into a goalpost. And uh, I saw one of your mopeds. I was walking with my daughter around Elizabeth Park, and I saw one of your mopeds by the river. And you know where that's going to go in the river, and they don't obey the uh, traffic signals at all. They go against red lights and, and uh, all the different types of lights. They don't obey the uh, traffic uh, uh, stops at all. And I was just wondering if we could bring up a, a, a motion to uh, have those goalposts protected in half inch to three quarter inch Armaflex insulation, wire tie it to the round the perimeter. So in case some kid doesn't hit his head on it, at least he has a, a factor of safety of surviving the impact. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Have you, uh, just out of curiosity, Mr. Reed, because we, we don't have the ability to do that for the, the schools, that'd be the Board of Education. Have you gone to them recently yes, about it? Not five years ago, I went to the Board of Education and it went upon deaf ears. Gotcha. So. It might be worth revisiting, and I'll, I'll follow up with the school district, too, just to see if they've had any consideration for it, but it might be worth revisiting. I mean, especially as you see more and more stuff in the news about concussions and close injuries and things like that. The but kids are getting faster and bigger. Sure. Okay. Yep. Thank, thank, yep. You. thank you very much, Mr. Reedy. All righty. We have any other public comment here? seeing any hands on the zoom we'll entertain a motion to adjourn so moved. Support. So mo support moved and okay. supported any further discussion seeing none it is unanimously so ordered for adjournment at 743 don't go anywhere though because we're gonna we'll go right into our budget meeting here now so yeah, no, I'm going to go up to the, the podium here. Go up top. Is it supposed to rain all night by you? Oh, it's terrible. Yes. Yeah, it's an ounce of the storm was terrible. I was like, it, oh, north of here is bad. Yeah, it's a, coming in towards Detroit. Um, yeah, if you want to. It's, yeah, it's, you shouldn't have to do anything with this. Um, I mean, you'll just unmute it whenever you want to start, but I'm just like, Debbie's got it all set up. Yeah.
Okay, I'd like to call the study session to order at 7.41 p.m. And Mr. Mayor will begin his presentation. Alrighty, thank you all very much. Uh, as uh, usual here, as a tradition the last few years, we'll uh, just go through a, a brief PowerPoint that outlines uh, how we've gotten to this point with our uh, fiscal year 2024 budget, um, what that looks like for our overall financial status, um, some of the major highlights or changes, <clears throat> um, and then kind of things to keep in mind as we go forward here. So, you know, it would behoove us to, uh, you know, kind of look at this in a silo um, and realize that now this, uh, you know, one, no one budget came out of nowhere. This is a uh, culmination of decades and decades and decades of precedent here. Um, but for our overall financial status here, and you know, when the budget being at, in the 23 and some odd million dollar range, um, I always, when I talk about it to people, kind of put it in the perspective that, and this is, I guess, you know, one of the first, the last two years or so is the first times that I've uh, haven't been able to say it's like almost the exact same. But our budget, you know, in fiscal year 20, uh, 2000 um, was only around 20, 21 million dollars as well. So over the course of that time, uh, we've seen huge declines in our state shared revenue, uh, huge declines in the value of a mill, um, huge declines in our staffing levels. Oh, oh, we're missing something here. I said you're on mute. Oh, is the computer on mute? Maybe. The Zoom might be on mute, actually. Oh, yeah, I had done that earlier. I apologize. <clears throat> All righty. So we've seen uh, you know, huge declines in our state's shared revenue um, that we receive uh, from the state of Michigan, uh, huge declines in the value of what a mill actually um, brings in budget-wise for us, uh, really big declines in our staffing levels uh, through retirements, attrition, um, not filling vacancies, reorganizing departments, things like that. Um, but over that time, um, you know, I think I feel very comfortable in saying that the level of service we provide to, to our residents um, is still very much maintained above the level um, for most of the other areas here around us, and that's something that we take great pride in. Unfortunately, uh, the Mun Michigan Municipal League has not updated their chart in some time. Uh, the last ones that they had here were from fiscal year 2017, but I think the picture that it paints here is still the same um, in terms of how uh, much the state used to give us as part of their revenue sharing um, versus what we get now. Um, over the course of that 20-some year period, um, it would likely be a, a cumulatively over $12 million that we uh, received under previous formulas that we do not receive now. Um, well, you kind of you can kind of see a little bit on here, and it's tough to project out totally, but on an annual basis, um, it looks like it's probably pretty safe to say that that is between 1.6 and 1.7 million dollars um, that we used to receive that we do not uh, anymore. Um, and we've had to right, do more with less in that time frame. As you see here, uh, while we've seen some upticks a little bit of recent um, as property values have rebounded quite a bit, um, but the, the effects of the Great Recession still definitely linger here. Um, property values have rebounded really incredibly um, since that you know, 08, 09, 2010 range. Um, but because of Proposal A and the Headley Amendment, um, our property tax revenues do not increase um, at the same rate that they were uh, were able to collapse, frankly. Um, whereas uh, before the Great Recession, um, we were looking at about $850,000 um, per mill. Um, and in this year's budget, it is about $659,000 is the value of one mill. Um, this budget does not propose an increase to our overall millage rate at all. Um, and again, uh, that uh, value of a uh, one mill comes out to just under $660,000 annually, or about $72 uh, for the average taxpayer per mill. <clears throat> Staffing levels, uh, as we uh, I discussed very briefly um, beforehand, um, you know, we used to operate about 200 full-time employees in the city of Trenton. Now we're, we're below that 140 number, I believe. Um, we've continuously shrunk our workforce through retirements and attrition over the past two decades, um, but really still have maintained an excellent level of service to our residents and uh, been able to do more with less. And that has certainly come with a tremendous amount of challenges. Um, I think that uh, I, I feel very comfortable speaking for this group, saying that our employees are some of, if not our best assets that we have. Um, and the work that they do is what really allows us to take pride 
um, in our positions here and in our community as a whole. So um, through their, their efforts, we've been able to continue to make this work, but had to get a lot smarter about how we staff our departments. So then looking at the kind of big picture financial status, um, you know, we have obviously the auditors come in from Plant Moran and all those folks um, that talk about uh, all these costs on an annual basis. Um, but digging into the budget here, there's obviously some important things uh, as we think about the long-term impacts of this budget, uh, not just uh, in a silo. So some of those debt obligations, so this yeah, is not going to do anyone good trying to read on the screen. Um, but uh, you can see it uh, in, uh, in your packets. It will certainly be there. Um, I was telling Councilwoman Bond Crooks here that my uh, PowerPoint's actually uh, six slides shorter than it was last year. Um, and a good chunk of that actually is, uh, well, not just because I want to be out of here sooner or anything like that, but um, because so many of those debt obligations have come off the books from last budget um, that we were able to eliminate uh, entire slides because of that. Uh, as you'll see, there's three um, enter enterprise fund projects. Um, I'm having trouble even reading it on my own screen here. Um, two of the uh, broader governmental bond projects and then uh, other internal loans um, from both the DDA and the uh, Honeywell project um, over at the ICE rink too. Um, but so we had uh, a handful come off the books from this uh, past fiscal year um, and then after this current fiscal year uh, we will have two more um, and then as you can see others phase out over time too. So. Um, the smallest number of obligations we have seen on a sheet like this, uh, I think in my entire time on council in the 10 years here too. So that I, it's fun to look at now, but I don't want to set the expectations too high because there are absolutely, and you know, we know this, there are going to be other, other expenditures that come up, sewer projects, um, you know, the pool bond uh, that we just discussed the last meeting, things like that. But as of right now, it's uh, at least comforting to see um, many of those coming off the books and those numbers getting smaller. Overall fund balance. Uh, currently, um, the city of Trenton's overall fund balance is roughly, and this specific numbers will be available in your packets, but roughly $8.9 million is our available or current fund balance, I apologize. Um, and then $2.7 million of that is the uh, non-restricted fund balance. Um, but as noted there, repayments to the general fund um, from those uh, do allow for uh, an increased usage, usage of fund balance and more uh, quote unquote available fund balance um, that is currently non-spendable there. This total budget uh, we, that uh, for the entirety of it that we're proposing here comes out to $23,924,397 um, with the good accounting standards uh, you're supposed to have about 15 to 20 percent of your annual budget um, as your fund balance. So for reference for our budget that would be between 3.6 and 4.8 million dollars um, and as you can see we, we greatly exceed that with that 8.9 number. So very good news there um, and at least to be in a healthy position. Millage rate here you can see uh, Karen's fund spreadsheet um, that definitely uh, Right, very easy to read, and I'm sure everyone is very uh, excited about it. It makes sense to me. You just got to look at it for a little bit. Um, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, this budget does not uh, propose a change in the millage rate. Um, we are currently operating um, about a third of a mill below that Headley cap, um, so it's something obviously to continue to be mindful of. But as of right now, we do still have some leeway there if need be. Um, but again, this does not propose any sort of change in the millage rate um, from what was set last year here, too. Legacy costs. Um, this has obviously been for years now one of the you know biggest uh, budget items for us, and something that we certainly um, you know don't want to fall short of on our obligations towards. Um, three years ago, um, this body uh, adopted a resolution um, to provide for a, a more consistent amortization schedule for our MERS retirement plan. Um, that results in flat rate payments, or flat payments, I apologize, of uh, $2.5 million per year um, over the course of the next six years, uh, rather than the uh, crazy fluctuating amounts where we were going to get, which were, I think, 3.5, 4.2, 5.1, and then it falls off to 850 grand, um, and it was just kind of all over. So for simplicity, that's helped... Uh, helped with our, our budgeting process quite a bit of knowing what those expectations are going to be, but also you know brought a lot more clarity uh, to that too. Um, our OPEB arc, or other post-employment benefits, basically retiree health care, things like that, 
um, was just a little over $3.5 million in that budget, and that is down a huge amount from last year, which was uh, very beneficial to the budget, um, but dropped uh, yeah, over $1.4 million from what we had last year. Um, and then our police and fire uh, actual actuarial required contribution um, was just over $2 million as well, um, which was an increase of about $120,000 from last year. So after discussions with the department heads compiling their requested budgets, we had a balanced budget. We didn't have to go back through, uh, you know, cut out things, talk about um, you know, major restructuring or things like that. Um, as you'll see in uh, the uh, memo Karen had put um, towards the front of that, um, there weren't any grandiose requests from departments. They kept their costs in line. Um, they knew that, as we'd talked about for years prior, um, that this was going to be one of our last uh, tougher budget years um, before some of those other big obligations came off the books. Um, so I feel that as a whole, while you know we're not doing anything grandiose or uh, planning to do anything cool, these are obviously things that we can you know amend as they come up over time. Um, but right now, um, we were able to balance the budget without uh, changing the millage rate and without using fund balance um, at all. And so that's something that I have to give a lot of credit to our department heads um, and to Karen and Dean as well for, um, for making sure we were able to do this. But again, um, this is uh, a you know, temporary document for us here. And going forward, there are certainly going to be things that we have to think about. Um, for example, you know, we have, uh, as uh, was part of our motion earlier. We've got a closed session for contract negotiations. Those are things that are still ongoing um, and we'll certainly end up having to make budget amendments uh, to help make sure our employees are taken care of. Um, we do have some of those debt obligations coming off the books um, as we pointed out there um, that will help free up some of our available fund balance um, in certain areas. Uh, as everyone here is well aware of, as we just talked about at the last meeting or two, um, the pool bonds that we'll have to look forward to um, and making sure that we keep our facilities maintained along with a variety of our other infrastructure projects that um, we're going to have to look at. Included in here, um, well, actually I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit later on, um, but capital projects review um, as uh, you know, we've seen our, our PACER study, um, the capital projects that we've gotten from our engineering department and the plans related to so many of those facilities. Um, and how each of our departments are, are doing some of that longer term forecasting and what those needs are going to be um, along with our continued uh, road improvements, whether it be through our concrete or asphalt um, replacement um, and creative ways that we might have to look to, to get more local road improvement money. Um, I know that uh, I, I feel pretty confident that uh, Trenton probably has some of the best local roads around um, and I you know, not to toot our own horn, but I feel like it's not super close. But from that same token, we still have, we've seen the paper study. We know of all the improvements that still do need to be made um, and need to make sure that we continue to be on top of these things. And then lastly, um, this budget does include money um, in it for an overall building assessment for what our needs are um, between our, our police station, our fire stations, our DPS building, um, but to get a professional opinion on, you know, what that might look like, uh, what the costs are going to be, and that's certainly going to be a, you know, several years long project will likely require um, bonds and, you know, something that might be have to be voted upon, but we at least uh, certainly owe it to our folks to, to get the ball rolling on that and make sure that they've got a, a safe place to work and, frankly, buildings that we can be proud of, too, um, as we would want our, you know, neighbors, residents, uh, businesses, and things like that to uphold the high standards of our buildings that we want to hold them to as well. Um, so that is actually going to conclude my presentation here. Obviously, the uh, the gritty details um, are all on the binders that you all have um, available and certainly want to uh, encourage you to go through all the line items uh, with that. Um, I know on Wednesday uh, evening, we'll have all of our department heads here as well um, to answer any questions that uh, you may have for each of those departments um, or anything like that. Um, but certainly, if anyone has any questions or uh, comments or anything now, I'm certainly happy to answer. But I will turn it over to Mayor Pro Tem Pate here um, for the remainder of the meeting. Thank you. I'd like to open the floor for any comments or questions for the mayor at this time. Uh, I have one. Yeah, please, Rick. You made a comment in your mayor about fund balance. Can anybody in this room tell me the last time we didn't spend fund balance? She's hiding behind there the podium. <laughs> been a while though right while. so I think yeah. it, right but I don't I don't remember them ever not taking something at least 
which attributes to the people sitting over here on the right that you did what the mayor asked you to do, which is awesome, and we appreciate that. <clears throat> you know, yeah, I know we have things like negotiations and things coming up, but I can't remember a time when it wasn't in there from the beginning. So I think your department heads did a great job, and you and Dean did an awesome job too. Yeah, normally I am. Uh, I've gotten quite used to, uh, you know, that first number is like, I think I'd edited it out. It was 1.4 million one year. It was 1.7 million the other year. And so when we were starting at zero, all right, cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't know why we didn't think of doing that before. That's all I got. Well, you know my other comment, but you don't mind can't. So. <laughs> uh, any other comments from council? Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, Councilperson um, Moncrooks. Yeah, I was talking to the mayor earlier about our engineering staff about how we're doing mm -hmm. with, you know, going out, you know, outsourcing our engineering department. And uh, he seems to think that uh, we're saving money and they're doing a pretty good job. Um, how are we doing in-house in our, you know, building an engineering department as far as, you know, getting things expedited, getting things done? That's a concern when a resident comes and says, they need this, they need that. How, how is our staff doing in-house with taking care of you know what needs to be done and also you know how, how we've outsourced sure you know, no both, i both things yeah i think so yeah kind of separating the two of them um i think engineering is frankly um it's worked out fantastic for us that uh, and I, I was flipping through but i can't find the exact page that it was in there but um yeah i mean the department is operating um i think it's safe to say cost neutral um with uh, you know where our permits and fee structure um is you know, making up for the entirety of the salary and expenses and things like that that come out, which is uh, a really incredible place to be. And it's, I think, saving us uh, annually over six figures um, in total. And so the, the output that we've gotten there has been um, really, really encouraging. Um, and then with building, too, um, that's something that, you know, we continue to, uh, we'll, we're going to have some, some staff changes in there, too, um, and continue to try and make sure that, right, we're at the fullest uh, staffing we possibly ne uh, need to be so that residents are getting things addressed, and especially as oftentimes the, the first interactions that people have uh, right. in the community, that, too. That and uh, also that they're getting their permits expedited quickly that they can get their projects done because mm -hmm. it does keep up the city of Trenton. Oh, 100 percent. Yep. In businesses, they can get things expedited quicker. Yep. Um, and that they're greeted and taken care of, you know, cordially. And, uh, you know, I just want to make sure that that level is good. Um, another thing, a question I have, uh, the rotary uh, park, the boardwalk down there by the water, mm -hmm. where are we at with that? Yeah. Um, what kind of money are we putting in We, I don't recall what the <coughs> exact number was for the full phases. Tim, do you happen to write it to put you on the spot for it? Yeah. And it was it yeah somewhere in just under two million or so. Um, so this does not budget anything for that first phase for that six hundred some thousand. We are looking at options, whether it be through grant money that I know um, Tim will have. Uh, some good news for us, not $600,000 worth, yeah, worth of good news on it for. Um, and then we're going to have some discussions, yeah, with some other uh, authorities and things like that for what opportunities for other money. They, they're still very much at the forefront of our minds. It's something that we still absolutely need to get done. Yeah, I went down there yeah. the other day, and it's kind of uh, it looks scary to me. It looks dangerous. It looks like something that shouldn't really belong in the city of Trenton. Yep. That we're not used to that level of... Uh, you know, erosion. I mean, yeah, it just it, it just doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. So that concerns me. Um, Police, fire, DPS, the new building for them concerns me. That's part of the futuring that I think sure. we need to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, these buildings are antiquated. They're not getting any better. And so that really, I mean, yep. we can say we, we need some answers on that. All you want, but guess what? We got a lot of things that need to be done. So you know, when I see things, and I don't mean to belabor this. But I think see things done like fireworks and things that are a you know and I love fireworks and I appreciate Tim going out to get them done and stuff but when I see fifty thousand dollars spent on that when I think there's some things that really I mean we need to address mm -hmm. I, I mean I've said it long enough I, I I think these things you know we got all the wants but what what do we really need sure and this is it concerns me um, another thing that I've brought up earlier to you was the uh, the uh, outsourcing, the uh, lawn cutting. Um, we did it all in the house at one point in time. Then we decided to sell off all of our equipment and go outsource. We decided the outsourcing 
was not as good as we did it in-house. So we bring it back in-house, we buy all the new equipment, but I'm just concerned that we're spending, it's a seasonal <coughs> job, it's seasonal. It's only so many um, months that we cut grass and maintain the parks and do whatever. And I'm thinking 64,000 bucks, might be able to hire a couple, two, three, four seasonal people, you know, and do uh, that in-house. That's actually the, the challenge, Matt, is we're at, like everyone else, we're having trouble hiring people. Well, that's my so next thing. So we are, we are adding another part-time person out of that six. There's going to be seven, um, that I should say part-time, that will be seasonal employees. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we're going to be in good shape, but good. Uh, I was not comfortable going forward and expanding it even more when we really have difficulty filling uh, filling the positions. But I will say getting rid of the contractors that we didn't renew, um, the, the complaints are down to zero, in fact, um, and we're spending less money with the seasonals getting the right. job done than we were with the contractors. I, so I it's agree. a step in the right direction. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. And, you know, I think... Uh, I never wanted to outsource the trash to begin with that many, many, many years ago, but you know, we went along with it because we were told that we were gonna save a ton of money. Well, you know, throw away the baby and the bathwater because we didn't get, I think, as good a job as we got from the sincere employees that we have in-house. So that was just a concern of mine. But I, why I'm bringing this stuff up, it's something to think, is if you look over your budget, it's something to think about, some of these things, and uh, we gotta look forward into this uh, future and decide where we're gonna start putting our money. and. Uh, get these buildings in order. Mm -hmm. You know, we got buildings that aren't ADA compliant. We've got buildings that are, you know, yep. look like crap. And we are setting an example, but we expect the business owners and the homeowners to keep all their stuff up. So we have to, as a city, keep our stuff up. So I'm just, you know, the budget's balanced and it's great and I think you did a great job. But um, that's why there's always budget events. Yep, 100%. Things come up and uh, you, you never know. Balance so, for now. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good for now. Yep. But no, I, you know, you guys did a great job, and I'm, you know, really proud that, uh, that we're getting the jobs done no matter what. You know, really. Mm -hmm. Thank you, that's Councilwoman. All. Thank you. Are there any other comments from Council? Okay, I'd like to open up the floor to um, comments from the public. If there is anybody in house that would like to make a comment about our study session, limit it to five minutes, please. And seeing none, I don't also see anybody on the Zoom. If you want to double check, I don't think I see. No, it's just our mask. Yep, so uh, with that, if we're ready for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? Okay, meeting is adjourned at, I, don't, I can't see where the time is, I'm sorry, 8.12 p.m., thank you.